Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old person who does not live out a lifetime. For one who dies at a hundred years we will be considered a youth. And one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. But the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountains, says the Lord. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. The word of the Lord. During the singing of our sequence hymn, the children are invited to follow the cross out to Children's Church. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, 
and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes, but Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. This morning, we join Mary in the chaos of darkness as she makes her way to the tomb. Mary, whose own demons had ruled her life until Jesus set her free, who loved Jesus like family, a friend, teacher, Messiah, crept under the cover of darkness to mourn at his tomb. Fighting the demons of despair, fear, emptiness and regret, St. John's Gospel alone reveals the chaos of darkness in which all those who loved Jesus most found themselves after his brutal death by crucifixion. There in the chaos of her own dark night of the soul, Mary comes to the tomb and is completely undone. The stone is rolled away not even his body now remains. Fleeing back into the darkness, she goes to find Peter and the beloved disciple to share this new layer of horror added to the tragedy of losing the person who they had found themselves, found God, and found each other. Running in disbelief, the two disciples come to the tomb and find all that Mary said was true. And in their darkness of having now lost everything, they too are undone. And they turn and go home, leaving Mary to weep alone. Through her tears, she finds the courage to look into the tomb and too numb to even be afraid when the angels speak to her. She speaks the words of her deepest pain. They have taken away my Lord. And still in the chaos of darkness, she turns and speaks to the one whom she mistakes as the gardener. 
of all the gospel writers, the writer of John's gospel most profoundly taps into the cosmic significance of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. He begins his gospel with Christ, present from the very beginning of time. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Into that cosmic light and life, humankind reintroduced the darkness of chaos. We turned in on ourselves, cut ourselves off from one another and from God, and turned God's good creation against itself. In time, God promised us never again to bring the waters of chaos to cover the whole face of the earth and to take responsibility of teaching us how to be God's people. Naming us, God tied God's self to the human family to be our God and the God of our children for all time. Rescuing the people of Israel from slavery, God became savior, provider, and king. And when God's presence proved too much for the people, God agreed to speak to them through the prophets. And then allowing God's children to grow up, God appointed kings in God's place. And in final desperation of reaching through to us, God took on human flesh to breathe again God's breath of life into our human family and was born into the world as Jesus. Coming into that world as a human child, Jesus completed the work he began at creation, at the cross. And as we heard on Good Friday, what was begun with God's love exploding into light, life, and the promise of this relationship could only be completed by that same incarnate word reintroducing us to the same love that created the universe that spans the eons, and that took on our own human flesh. In St. John's Gospel, Jesus' final words on the cross are, it is finished. The cosmic sigh with which these final words come is a sigh of God's own breath, again moving over the chaos of human darkness and eternally bringing from it the love, hope, and light of God. And from the darkness of Mary's own chaos outside the tomb that Easter morning, God's incarnate and resurrected word speaks the word of a new creation to her by name, Mary. And there was light. The light of the first day of creation was witnessed only by God, but the light of this new first day on which everything thought lost was not only returned, but returned eternally in Christ's triumph over death itself is witnessed by each of us called by name out of the chaos of our own darkness. As Jesus teaches Mary in what had become for her the second garden of paradise. Mary's exclamation of faith becomes her call to bring the good news to the rest of Jesus' disciples and to the world. You see, God's word, God's resurrected love, God's good news is not to be held on to ourselves, but is to be shared and lived. Sent out from the garden into the dawn of that second first day, the Eden story then becomes reversed. 
Selfishness would be to remain in the garden and not share the fruit of the knowledge of God's ultimate good triumphing over evil. And so Mary is sent out to bring us all back with her into the garden of God's love in the knowledge of Christ's resurrection. As Mary leaves the garden to share this impossible news with the disciples that Christ is risen, each of us is also called by name this day to become resurrection people, to return to the garden, to share the fruit of God's light, God's love, God's impossible abundance, God's good news in Christ. Baptized into Christ's death and resurrection, we continue to be a part of that resurrection community that begins with, as St. John tells it, one single witness that grew into this global phenomenon that still continues to this day. Sent out of the garden to cast out the demons of despair, fear, regret, and defeat, Mary is sent to resurrect the hope and spirits of the disciples, who are in turn sent to do the same for all of those suffering in their growing communities. And nearly 2,000 years later, we have been baptized into this resurrection life that continues to spread the good news in the midst of all the chaos and darkness of our own world. God's love and forgiveness are for all creation. We are loved not in spite of who we are, but because of who we are. No matter what the world may have convinced us about ourselves, God believes that we are worthy, that we are of infinite and eternal value, and that we are enough. As people of resurrection, we too are called to proclaim by word and action the good news to the world that continues to draw others back into life, back into hope, back into the garden where humankind is resurrected with Christ. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light has returned. Alleluia. Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him to newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ.
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil? And whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people? and respect the dignity of every human being. I will with God's help. May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins, keep us in eternal life by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Glinda, our diocesan bishop, Chase and Sarah, our clergy, David, our seminarian, and all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for Joseph, our president, Kay, our governor, Tab, our mayor, and all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. And there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our words may find favor in your sight. This morning, we pray for Will, Dennis, Lynn. Elizabeth, Tony, Bynum, Corky, Peter, Walt, Phil, Julia, Ellis, Gloria, Alice, Nina May, Dan, Stephen, Mike, Jane, Doolin, Gretchen, Heidi, Michael, Jerry, and for all people affected by the war in Ukraine. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. This morning, we remember Sharon Haley, Delinda Willis, and Anne White. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
very good morning to you and happy Easter. Welcome on this beautiful day. It is so good to be together as the body of Christ in this joyful celebration of our Lord's resurrection. If you're here for the first time, maybe the first time in a while, welcome. We are so very glad you're here. There are some cards that are in the pews which you are welcome to fill out and drop in the plates. That will give us opportunity to be in contact with you and let you know more about St. John's maybe or how you can be part of that as well. And we are so very glad you're here on this very special day. Big thanks to all those who helped make this place so beautiful. Music and flowers, it's an amazing day and it's worthy of God's celebration in this way. So thank you all for this help. And it's really, really amazing, all I can say. Um, a note on communion. Uh, if you come up to receive the bread and the wine of Holy Communion, you're welcome to drink from the chalice and drink the wine. If you want to have your bread dipped in the wine, we ask that you hold it in your hand and the Eucharistic minister will take it and dip it for you and then place it in your tongue or on your mouth. Um, if you don't want to receive the wine, that's perfectly fine. You can just cross your arms over your chest and the chalice will pass you by. I think those are all the announcements. Now, are there any birthdays that are being celebrated this week? No. Everybody here, no birthdays. Are there any anniversaries being celebrated this week? Ah, okay. Come on down. What number? Twelve. Twelve. Fantastic. Let us pray together. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send, therefore, your blessing upon these, your servants, so they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Happy anniversary. Walk in love as Christ loved us. He gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light and accessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit his own first gift for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread and life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with blessed John and all your saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through our Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.